from the Fairmont Hotel in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering When IoT Met AI, the intelligence of things. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We're in San Jose, California at the Fairmont Hotel at the When IoT Met AI show. It's all about the intelligence of things. A lot of really interesting startups here. You know, we're still so early days in most of this technology, and facial recognition gets a lot of play. Iris recognition, got to get rid of these stupid passwords. We're really excited to have our next guest. He's Modar Alawi. He is the CEO and founder of Iris. And it says here, Modar, that, that you guys are into face analytics and emotion recognition. First off, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. So face analytics, I'm a, I'm a clear customer. I love going to clear <laughs> the airport. I put my two fingers down. I think they have my iris, they have different things. But face, what's special about the face compared to some of these other kind of biometric uh, options that people so have? So yeah, we, we go beyond just the biometrics. Uh, we do pretty much the entire suite of face analytics, anything from eye openness, age, gender, emotion recognition, head bows, gaze estimation, et cetera, et cetera. So it is uh, pretty much anything and everything that you can derive from the face, including non-verbal clues, yawning, uh, head nod, head shake, et cetera. That is a huge range of, of things. So clearly, just the face recognition to know that I'm me, probably relatively straightforward, a couple anchor points, does everything measure up and match the prior. But emotion, that's a whole different thing. Not only are there lots of different emotions, but the way I express my emotion might be different than the way you express the very same emotion, right? Everybody has a different smile. So how do you start to figure out the algorithms to, right. to, to sort through this? Right, so um, you're right. There are some nuances between cultures, ages, genders, ethnicities, and things like that. Uh, generally, they've been universalized for the last three and a half decades by the scholars, the, 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 the psychologists, etc. So, um, what they actually have uh, had a consensus on is that there are only seven or six universal emotions plus uh, six. neutral. Right. So what are the six? Joy, surprise, anger, disgust, fear, sadness, and neutral. Okay, and everything is some derivation of that. You can break, kind of put everything in. That is correct. Buckets. So okay. think of them as the seven, seven universal colors, okay. or seven primary colors, okay. and then everything else is a derivative of that. Exactly. Okay. The other thing is, uh, um, um, you know, uh, emotions are hardwired into our brain. They happen in a uh, you know fifteenth or twenty fifth of a second, particularly micro expressions, and uh, they can uh, generally. Um, uh, give up a lot of information as to whether a person has suppressed a certain emotion or not, or whether they uh, are thinking about something negatively before they can respond positively, etc. Okay, so now you got the data, you know how I'm feeling. What are you doing with it? It must tie back to all types of different applications, I would assume. That's right, there are, there are a number of applications. Initially, when we created this, what we call enabling technology, uh, we wanted to uh, focus on two things. One is, what type of application can have the biggest impacts, but also the quickest adoption uh, in terms of volumes. Today we focus on driver monitoring AI as well as occupants monitoring AI, so we focus on autonomous and semi-autonomous vehicles. And the second application is social robotics, but in essence, if you think of a car, it's also another robot, except that social robotics are those potentially um, AI engines um, or even um, you know AI engines in a form of an actual robot that communicates with humans, therefore the word social. Right, right. So I can see kind of a semi-autonomous vehicle, or even a not autonomous vehicle, you want to know if I'm dozing off, and That's I think right. there's some of those things have been around in a basic form for a little while. But what about in an autonomous vehicle is impacted by my emotion as a, as really a passenger, right? Not That's necessarily right. a driver if it's a, a level five. That's right. So when we talk about autonomous vehicle, I think what you're referring to is level five autonomy, where a vehicle does not actually have a steering wheel or gas right. pedal or anything right. like right. that. And uh, we don't uh, foresee that those will be on a road for at least another 10 years or more. Uh, the focus today is on level two, three, and four, and that's semi-autonomy. Even for autonomous, fully autonomous vehicles, uh, you would see them come out with vision sensors or vision AI inside the vehicle so that these uh, sensors can, together with the software that can analyze everything that's happening inside, uh, cater to the services uh, towards what, what is going to be like the ridership uh, economy, right? Um, once the car drives itself autonomously, 
uh, the focus shifts from the driver to the occupants. As a matter of fact, it's the occupants that would be riding in these vehicles or buying them or sharing them, not the driver. And therefore, all of these services will revolve around who is inside the vehicle by age, gender, emotion, activity, etc. Interesting. So of all these things, age, gender, emotion, activity, what, what is the most important, do you think, in terms of your business and, and kind of where, as you said, you can have a big impact? We can group them into two categories. The first one is safety. Obviously, eye openness, head bows, blinking, yawning, and all of these things are of utmost importance, especially for focused on a driver at this point. Uh, but then there is a, a number of applications that relates to comfort and personalization. Um, and, uh, and so those could potentially take advantage of the emotions and the rest of the analytics that okay. we provide. So then where are you guys, Iris, as a company? Where do you have, do you have some installations, I assume, out there? Are you still early days? Kind of where are you in terms of the, uh, the development of the company? Oh, we have a quite a, quite, a, quite a mature product. Um, what I can disclose is uh, we have plans to go into mass production starting 2018. Um, some plans for Q4 2017 have been pushed out. So we'll probably start seeing some of those in Q1, Q2 2018. Okay. Um, we made some announcements earlier this year at CES with uh, Toyota and Honda. But then we'll be uh, seeing some uh, mass volume starting 2019 and beyond. Okay, and I assume you're a cloud-based solution. Uh, we do have that as well, but okay. we are particularly a local processing solution. So oh, you are offline, local. yeah. So think of it as an edge computing type of solution. Okay, and then do you work with other people's sensors and existing systems? Are you more of a kind of a software component that plugs in, or do you provide like the whole system in terms of the, I assume, cameras right. so to, we're, uh, to watch the people? We're a software people? company only. Okay. Uh, we, however, are hardware, processor, camera agnostic. And of course, everything um, for everything to succeed, it there will have to be some components of sensor fusion. Right. And therefore, we can work and do work with other sensor companies in order to provide higher confidence level of all the analytics that we provide. Pretty exciting. So you're not. So is it is it commercially available? Are you GA now or not quite yet? Will be commercially available. You'll start seeing it on the road uh, or on the market uh, sometime early next year. Sometime early next year. All right. Well, we'll look forward to it. Thank you so much. Very uh, very, very exciting very times. Thank you. All right. He's Modar Alawi, and he's going to be paying attention to you. Make sure you're paying attention to the road so you don't fall asleep and doze off and go to sleep. So uh, I'm Jeff Rick. You're watching the Cube. When I have team at AI, the intelligence of things, San Jose, California. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks for watching.